Hey, what's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. Welcome to 2023 and I really hope you had a great festive season, but you know, back into the content realm and I really hope you set yourself some goals into 2023 so you can absolutely smash this year. And today we're gonna to be talking about some codecs in your camera. And I haven't really discussed this on this channel, but I have discussed a little bit when it comes to what kind of codecs can record into certain memory cards, which you can click the link in the description below if you do wanna check out that video. What kind of memory cards you need, you need the ST cards, you need the Type-A cards, what one will suit which codec. But today we're gonna to be talking about the XAVC-HS, XAVC, VCS and the XAVCSI and what the differences are between these codecs. And we actually have to discuss the color shift that's actually in one of these codecs. And I've tested in the A74 and FX30 and it is consistent. So we have to stick around for that one. So first of all, we're gonna be talking about the XAVC HS. Now this is the H.265 codec. Now this one is really compressed. It's about two times compressed compared to your regular codecs. And this is going to obviously give you a lot more space on your memory cards. You're gonna be recording so much more into those memory cards. You won't have to buy a whole bunch more memory cards if you do have really long jobs. And also you won't have to buy as much hard drive space as well. So you're going to be saving so much more space but the biggest con of this one is that it doesn't play back very smooth at all. This can actually be extremely detrimental to your workflow because it can be sometimes painful to be editing with. And sometimes in some computers, you can't edit it at all. It's just so glitchy and really annoying, but hopefully you have a computer that is powerful enough, especially with the new M1 Mac chips. They are pretty powerful these days and can handle the HS files. Now, one of the cons with the HS codec as well, if you do shoot in PAL, you can't actually utilize 25 frames per second. You can actually utilize 24 frames per second in NTSC, but you know, people in England, people in Australia and New Zealand, all those kind of places that utilize PAL, you can't actually utilize 25 frames per second. So HS codec isn't actually usable for us unless we use 50 or 100 frames per second. Now, when it comes to filming in 50 frames per second, it is about 200 megabits per second. And yes, you can still get 10-bit 422 codec in that as well. So while we're on the topic of XAVC HS, now this is uh, what I was talking about at the start. There is an actual color shift between the three different codecs, XAVC HS, XAVC S, and XAVC SI. You can actually see this, and I did test this between the FX30 and A74 as well, just to see if it was consistent or if it was just with the one camera, but it's between two cameras. So I don't think there is any coincidences here. And this is the first time I've ever seen this. Now, I actually tested this with the Batman and Batman is about the similar color as middle gray, which is 18% gray. Now I did switch it over to the 18% gray card and you can see there is a pretty much color shift between these three codecs. It is mainly the XAVC HS codec. It actually has a bit of a green tinge to it, which is very unusual. And this is the first time I've ever seen this actually in the different codecs because I don't really look out for this. But uh, if you are shooting in XAVC HS, I do recommend actually test it yourself on a gray card and see if you can see if there's any color shifts. And if there is, that's where you just gotta make slight adjustments to your color if you are trying trying to fix a few of those gray tones. But when it comes to the real world, you probably won't notice any difference whatsoever. And if you do, it is 10-bit 422, so you're able to correct that in post-production anyway. Next, we're going to be talking about XAVCS and XAVCSI, the pros and cons of shooting with those two codecs. But then also after that, we're gonna be having a look at image quality performance, color reproduction, and just seeing the overall uh, differences between XAVC HS, S, and SI in the end. So be sure to stick around for that one. Now, when it comes to the XAVC-S codec, this one is pretty much standard that came with all the other previous Sony cameras, which you're pretty much used to. But this time you can actually record that 10-bit 422 codec, which is incredible. It's a massive difference between 8-bit 420 and 10-bit 422. Incredible difference when it comes to color representation and just getting the most out of your color grading. 
But this one at 25 frames per second, it's about 140 megabits per second, as opposed to that 250 megabits per second in the all iCodec. And when it comes to the 50 frames per second in XAVCS, the bit rate is actually 200 megabits per second, 10 bit 422, which is pretty much the same as the HS codec. Now it is more compressed than the all I codec, but not as compressed as the H.265 codec, which is the HS. And lastly, we've got the XAVCS I codec. Now this is the all I codec. This pretty much retains all image quality and the file sizes are unfortunately quite large. 250 megabits per second in 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second is 500 megabits per second. Now this one will be so much easier to edit in your editing software because it's not compressed, it's the full codec, but this is all relative to what kind of hardware you're running inside your PC. And obviously it's a case to case scenario. And if this is going to be running smooth, depending on your specs, but you're gonna get the best image quality and performance out of this codec. Now, one of the downsides, obviously, you're going to need more SD cards and more room in your hard drive because it's the highest amount of bitrate and very memory hungry. So you're going to have to be prepared to swapping cards all the time and dropping footage and obviously having more hard drive space. And along with that as well, when it comes to transferring speeds, you're going to obviously spend a lot more time transferring the files. You're going to spend a lot more time in uh, copying the files, all those kind of things. And it's just obviously a lot harder and you do have to take that into consideration. Now we'll have a look at the sharpness and image quality at 100%. Now at 300%, we're not really seeing too much compression artifacts out of the XAVCHS codec. Even at 800%, it's really hard to see a difference. I mean, there may be a very, very small difference between the noise that you actually get out of the HS and S codec. The SI does seem just a small amount cleaner. Now we'll zoom into 1500%, and the compression artifacts, just it's really hard to tell the difference between these three codecs. Now here is a scene outside with a lot of moving subjects in the frame, because this is generally where you would see compression artifacts. Yet when there's a moving scene, it's just really hard to actually see any major difference here because there's so much happening and it's really hard to see any compression artifacts even zoomed in at 1500%. Now we'll have a look at the low light situation at 1500%. And this is boosting the shadows on all three of these up by 50%. And compression artifacts, it's just really hard to tell the difference between these three codecs. The only difference I can see is just that slight color shift in the XAVCHS codec. Now when actually changing the colors completely, it was actually pretty much very similar results out of each codex. Now, I think the main takeaway here is that there isn't really much difference between XAVCHS and XAVCS and XAVCSI. Obviously, there are differences between how much data rate there is, how much compression there is, and what it can actually run like on your editing software. Is it going to be editing smoothly or not? Because the compressed codec takes a lot of information for your computer to decompress and try and edit through that. And sometimes that can bottleneck your editing software. So if you don't have a computer that will handle that, then you may have to be forced to shoot XAVCS or XAVCSI. But at the end of the day, there isn't going to be much major differences. But if you are using say green screen, or if you're doing some After Effects tracking, maybe the SI codec will be beneficial in terms of having the best image quality possible. But if you are shooting for YouTube, if you're shooting for social media, basic projects, XAVCS would probably be your best bet or XAVCHS if you can you know, edit it. But XAVCSI isn't really that beneficial specifically for the file sizes that you get. But it's one codec that I've pretty much been using ever since the A7S III. And I think after this video, I'll be switching over to XAVCS for majority of my projects. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it very useful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. There'll be a tons more content coming with the FX30 and A7 IV and all those kind of Sony cameras. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.